We're going to have the uh, Chief Marketing Officer for the IMO speaking today, and we're going to have the National Training Director also. Before we start, I'd like to say a few words. My name is Ed Zucker, and I'm the President of uh, Florida Seniors. And I'm excited about today because we're kicking off the Florida Seniors Opportunity in uh, Coral Springs, which will grow throughout Florida. To do this, I've joined with the IMO that's represented here today, who is the fastest growing IMO in the country. Started just three years ago by Adam Schwartz, who will be speaking today. In a short period of time, he's been able to acquire 400 agents through both agencies and direct contracting that chose to be with him mostly as a result of word of mouth because the opportunity has been honed to a point that anyone that seriously wants to be a successful agent in the senior market has got to learn the systems that were created by Adam Schwartz. So without further ado, I would like to go ahead and introduce Adam, if he'd be so kind as to begin the presentation. I myself, I'm going to sit down and listen because we all have a lot to learn. Great. Thank you so much, Ed. All right. You know, um, just found out I was going through the presentation right this second, but that's all right. When you do something enough times, a lot of where our confidence comes from is by going over it over and over and over where it becomes such repetition where everything's already played out before it even happens. Um, oftentimes, uh, just to go over the beginning, you, if you'll notice when you go into someone's house, they let you in and they're walking behind you. I purposely have to walk a couple of steps ahead because usually, or maybe every once in a while I hear, well, Adam, just so you know, I'm glad you came, but we're not doing anything today. We're just shopping around. I purposely have to walk a couple of steps ahead of them because I've already planned the next 20 to 30 minutes, and I know in about 37 and a half to 45 minutes, it's going to end in him giving me a void check. So I have to walk away just to hide my laughter and excitement in. Uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the exact presentation that we use to emotionally engage our client as well as rationally uh, show them that this is the best program for them. The reason why I say that, uh, it's probably a common fact, uh, people think, uh, some agents will think I'll get you in the house and I'll trap you into saying yes, I'm going to sell you the policy. I'll run out and uh, you guys know as well as I do maybe that works but I think your attention will be a little hurt uh, and the reason why that is is you're not really engaging them rationally so if you engage someone emotionally they won't buy from you they just won't have it in the future now if you engage someone rationally but not emotionally they will buy just not from you so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a sales process where it's absolutely seamless, no matter what someone can say, ideally. Uh, we have a plan and we're guiding them to the end. Uh, so with that being said, uh, would anyone like to be a client of mine? I can't do this I'll presentation. Be a You'll be a client? Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me get my client chair. Awesome. Now, if you notice, when I'm sitting with my client, what I want to do is I want to be at a certain angle. You know, I don't want to sit across from him. That's uh, very aggressive. You know, me sitting like here, and he's sitting squared up on me, that's awfully aggressive. So the first thing we want to do is we want to sit on an angle. And I know we're skipping a couple of things, but when he lets me in and I'm ahead of him, kind of letting him guide me where he wants to sit. Ideally, I wouldn't want to sit on the couch, but I have been guilty of making a lot of sales on the couch. Typically, you want to go into the kitchen table. That's where a lot of house decisions are made. Um, 
you want to watch out for his favorite seat. Uh, I think you'll get an idea of uh, where he or she would prefer to sit. And so now that we're sitting down, I guess uh, this is there's no spouse in the house. It's it's just it's just Ed. So what we're going to do is a presentation with just one person. But if there were two, ideally what I'd like is one would sit here and then spouse would sit right next. Again, I don't want to have anything like this. I wouldn't even want a, the spouse to be looking at each other like that. But that's not so bad if that happens. So, go. So, uh, uh, Adam, uh, I just want to let you know before you start. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be buying anything. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't want you to buy anything today. As a matter of fact, uh, through my whole presentation, if you try to offer me money, I'm not going to accept it. That's not what I do. And I'll go into that later on, so I appreciate you bringing that up. Now, uh, usually that won't ha they'll usually happen at the door. Usually it'll happen here. But uh, I just want to get into a little bit of warm-up before we get into the presentation. Just because I come from a mortgage protection background, uh, usually when I come into someone's house, I have my whole warm-up planned up. I would uh, normally say something like, oh, wow, your house is much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Then we'll get into, uh, you know, how long have you lived here for? And then uh, where were you before here? And then just communicate, uh, just uh, basic <coughs> communications. When one person opens themselves and says about themselves, they're expecting the other person to volunteer with information as well. So after I ask them this, usual files is where am I from? Where do I live? How long have I been there? We've already had the warm up already done, okay, just by that one question. So now I'm getting the look. And if you guys have been on the field, you know what look I'm talking about. The look is, all right, so what do you have? Okay, we're having nice warm up. He gives me the look, be like, okay, what do you have? Now what I'll do is, is I'll just use this as my uh, card. Now when I, this is so important to keep in mind. When I'm on the phone and I book my appointments, I'm taking a lot of notes on the phone. I'm taking uh, why they, you know, why they filled out the card, what they were looking for, what they wanted to achieve, anything that I need to know. I'm going to put it right on the card, and you'll see why. So I'm going to start by saying, typically, the way I do my appointments. The reason why I say typically, I do a lot of things in my presentation that goes probably unnoticed to let the person know that I do this a lot. And I'm very good at what I do without being cocky or arrogant, which is a very big turn off, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is say, typically the way I start my appointments is just by showing the card that you have filled out. Now I do this for two reasons. Uh, one, with all the theft identity out there, it's important to know that I don't just take your card or take your information, take your information, um, pretty much put it on a card and steal your identity and, and, and make up some card that doesn't exist. So does that card uh, look familiar to you? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Now the second reason why I show the card, more importantly, was when you filled this card out to get an idea of what you were looking for or what you wanted to accomplish when you fill out this card. Well, you know, uh, I know that uh, there's going to be a point in time in which uh, I'm going to pass on and I don't want to be a burden on my kids. I want uh, I, I want to be able to take care of the, the funeral costs on my own. Okay, good. Good. And just to make sure, or just to get an idea, would you have an idea of how much that would cost to uh, take care of those expenses? Well, you know, from what I hear, it's somewhere between about Ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Would that be about right? Ten and fifteen. Well, are you talking about to take care of final expenses today or with an inflation in the future? Oh, uh, well, well, today. Okay, yeah, I'd say ten, fifteen is a good place to start. Yeah, I mean, people have different requests for their for their final needs. Mm -hmm. So what well, may work for one may be work different for another. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, ten to fifteen thousand is a great place to start. Now, before I go into that any further, are there any other uh, expenses that I should know about? Um, well, I, um, I'm li I've been living here in Florida, but I'd like to be buried in New York. Okay, so it's going to be a little transportation cost of that? Okay, that's good to know. See, the reason why I'm asking this is maybe you had a mortgage protect, anything else that may come up. Um, 
this is the part where I'm getting as much information as possible as well as getting the need. He may come to me and say, I just want to see what you have. He may not be so awesome as to say exactly what's going on, but I can't move any further until I get a need. And what I mean a need is something that doesn't give him a peace of mind. I'm not here to use fear tactics. I think we're beyond that. I think as long as we both realize what he wants to accomplish, my only job is to give him the information to help him do so. So once he gives me the information, I mean, pretty much the need's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, he doesn't want to pass away, and he doesn't want to leave. His, oh, well, you, you know, he he doesn't want to leave the burden of his final expenses on his family. So now, once I got the need, people don't do this. It's so small, but it's important. Now, if I weren't here today, do you have anything else to take care of uh, your final expenses for your family? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, do you have any type of life insurance, uh, annuities, money in the bank account, anything that will take care of this ten to $15,000 bill? Well, I, I, I have $5,000 left in my IRA. Okay. And then do you really want to use that for your final expenses? Uh, I hadn't thought about it much, but, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to make sure that uh, I don't leave any bills to my kids. So the idea is to put a program together where you can take care of all your bills and final expenses, but you don't have to go through your IRA, right? Okay. Why do I do that? Because I don't want them to say, oh, I'll just have my IRA pay for it at the end. We cleared up that my goal is to, he wants me to describe, uh, create a program for him that will take care of all of his final expenses or, or any other debt that he may leave on his family. We'll take care of all of it. That's my goal. Now, some people do overkill, be like, if we do this and make this and, and we put this in a, in a, make an affordable budget for you, will you do business with me today? Very over the top. You'll see it once you do your job the right way, you don't really have to uh, handcuff to do anything you want them to do. I got the need. The need seemed pretty important to him for him to take care of. That's enough for me. So once I get the need, what I want to say is before I go through all the different programs that gear to taking care of your final expenses, I want to make sure when we're talking about these programs, we're you know comparing apples to apples, if you know what I mean. So before we start, are you familiar with the difference between whole life and term? Um, I don't know, but I heard it's a good good thing to buy term and invest in different. Okay. Some would say that. Some would say that. Um, whatever he says, we got to compliment him on what he knows because uh, the only way you get people to feel free to participate is you make them feel good as they're participating. So I'm going to say, wow, you know, most people have never even heard that concept before. That's, that's really awesome. Um, so with that being said, are you familiar with the difference between whole life and term? If not, that's totally fine. No, not really. So if he says, no, not really, uh, would you like me to go through those differences before we start? Okay. They'll say, yeah, who says no to free information, right? So now when I go through this program, there are some things that I do that when I teach this process, it's rarely duplicated the way I'm doing it. It's very important, okay? This is where we start emotionally engaging them, uh, price conditioning them, and now I'm going to keep this in mind. When I go... When I go shopping, or when you go shopping, you want to get apples. You, you, you don't know anything about Granny Smith, and you don't feel like you need to shop around for other apples to know that Granny Smith is the right one for you. The point of this presentation, what I'm about to do, is to gain trust. And we talk about trust a lot, but what we don't talk about is in the right context. Because he doesn't have to trust me to make a decision today. What he has to trust is that he knows enough about insurance that he knows what's right for him just like I don't know Granny Smith personally but I get enough about I, apples to know that this is a good apple for me so that's what I want to do this will eliminate all the I need to think about it um, you know uh, you did a great presentation give me your card back I'll call you in a week so with that being said here we go okay this is important I'm gonna start off with my presentation on an angle okay the reason why I'm doing that I'm setting up the way he sits but also because I'm gonna write upside down it's really easy and so the way I'm gonna start is 
Well, and I'm going to compliment him on what he knows, and I'm going to say, I'm going to go through the difference between term and whole life, but I'm going to do it in a way that I don't think anyone else does. When I was studying for my test, they had chapters on what term and whole life was. It was so dry, hard to figure out. So what, what I did was, to make it easy on my clients, is I put the difference between term and whole life on two very simple understanding graphs. Ready? The first one is term. Now, I'm writing this upside down. Most of the time what people say is, oh my God, you're writing upside down. You must do this a lot. I got that all the time. This is where you show your personality. Please don't be cocky on this one. Don't be arrogant. Just say, yeah, do quite a bit. Smile, keep doing your thing. These little things, believe it or not, they don't seem like anything. But in the end result, it will make it a very effortless close. There won't be a close here. Okay, so with that being said, we have term. Now, the way term works has a face amount, like any other life insurance. As long as you have it, never goes up, never goes down. And then, you'll have a premium. If you notice, the premium starts off really low. You know what? So I kind of did that like it was spontaneous, but I knew I was going to do that. You know what? When I describe uh, when I describe term, why don't we use a company that we can all uh, that we all know and identify with? Are you familiar with AARP? Yo, yes, of course. Oh yeah, and most seniors, if not every senior you come across, is going to know what AARP is. I feel like the best way to explain term. Let's go through their five-year renewable AARP that most people have. Is that okay? Okay. So now the way it works is. Typically what happens is a person hits 65 years old, say a, say a guy's been working for the last 40, 45 years, and he just realized he retired, his benefits aren't going to go with him. And he doesn't know how he's going to take care of his family. Well, he gets something in the mail, and it's AARP, and he says insurance is insurance. $80, $10,000, all right, sounds like a good deal. So what happens is he's 65 years old, but now he, he's paying $80 for 10,000 insurance, but now he hits 70 years old, and the premium shoots up. He had no idea. He never had an agent go through the program. He had no idea. So now he's on a low fixed income. He's on Social Security or Social Security Disability, and he's having a hard time affording these premium payments. But there are some people who will say, well, I've been paying this for five years. I can't give it up now. I understand that. So they keep it. Other people, they'll drop it or they'll figure out how to convert to a permanent program. So five years go by. Now it shoots up. He's 75 years old. Now at this point, program is made so that people on a low fixed income, if they're going to afford this, they're making a lot of sacrifices in their life. But say that person at this point is like, I've been paying this for 10 years. I can't let this go now. It goes another five years. And in most states at age 80, your policy is done. What does that mean? It's a great question. It means that all the premiums you put in at age 80, your term is expiring. So you have one, two choices. One, let your program go, which is gone anyways. Or two, Converted it to whole life at age 80, which is going to be a lot more expensive than if you were in 65. Do you have any questions based on that term? No. Okay. What will happen? Okay. I'm getting away a lot of things. One, price conditioning. Now they think $10,080. Okay. They're going to be so happy. And they're thinking the price is, are, is going to be rising every five years. They're going to be so happy when they see this program. Okay. I'm also going through the strenuous journey of having a five-year renewable term policy from age 65 to 80 years old. There's going to be a lot of people you're sitting in front of that are going to feel, I've had this for five years, I can't let this go. You have to show them what the journey is going to be like. And they have to feel it. If not, you'll find a lot of people that I'm showing us a, an $80 policy to but would rather take the $70 term because they really didn't feel what was happening here. Now, I'd say probably one out of ten times, if you do it right, and you're really emotionally engaging with the client, often what I'd see is this. They're looking down, and then once they understand it, and then I go, do you have any questions? They're going to say no. 
Then they're going to look down even more. And then they're going to look at me and they're going to say, that's me. And they're going to pull out their AARP or their colonial pen. And you're going to see that your sale has already been gotten before we even get to the actual selling point. Because now all they want to do is get rid of their policy. And all I did was be informative. I didn't put down it. I didn't say this is good, this is bad. Now I'm going to get to that term and best of difference. I'm going to get to that. But notice when he said that, even though I don't agree with it because it's a 30-year-old thing that's just out of date and just doesn't have a, its place in the, in the business, I still complimented on it. I don't want to dis you know I, I don't want to you know go against anyone. My job is to be informative and with the information I'm presenting to you, whatever you felt in the past may be a little bit different after I leave and that's fine. But I'm not going to debate you or go against you. So now uh, I've explained term and anytime I explain something I always just make sure we're on the same track. Do you have any questions based on term? No, uh, I get it. It's just uh, kind of expensive for me. Uh, I understand. I understand. And this is just uh, one of the two programs I'm going to show to you today. So maybe the other one may benefit you more. You be the judge. Um, what we have is called Whole Life. Now you kind of want to say it almost like if it's a, like a song and a rhythm. Now what we have here is called Whole Life. Now the way this works, kind of just like the term, never goes up, never goes down. And you'll have a premium. If you notice, the premium starts higher, but never goes up, never goes down. And then you'll have what's called a cash value built into your program, which starts off at zero. But the longer you have it, due to compound interest, the more aggressive it grows to eventually it adds up to the face amount. So just because you have this for your whole life doesn't mean you need to pay into this for your whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I get it. Uh, uh, but what, what happens when I get to age 80? It'll still be with you. So the thing I want you to keep in mind, the word term you know, means temporary. The word whole life means more permanent. You know, so if I was a Prime America agent, uh, I would say buy term. Term is the best. And if I was a New York Life agent, I would say buy whole life. Whole life is the best. But the truth of the matter is, I work with just pretty much every single state regulated carrier out there. I don't have any managerial biases. The truth of the matter is every product was made for a reason. So then Adam, what's what what, what what's the best carrier? What's the best product? What 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 does someone in my situation do at my age? Well, you know, what I like to do is just be more informative and I think when you see what's in front of you, you'll be able to know. So for example, if the word term means temporary, that means if uh, I had a 30-year term, I mean, what do I need a permanent policy for? I got a 30-year term. If I'm going to pay it in 30 years, get a 30-year term. If all of a sudden uh, I'm, I'm, young, I'm with someone, we're a young couple, we just had kids, we want to make sure they're okay until college, then they're, they're on their own, then I'll get a 20-year term. What's the sense of getting a permanent policy for when there's not a permanent need? But things like estate planning, planning for your final expenses, these are going to be issues that are going to be with you for the rest of your life. Right. So a lot of times people more look into a permanent policy for a permanent problem. That's what I need. Mean. Is that right? So with that being said, what do you think would benefit you more, your term program or your, your whole life program? Oh, this whole life program because, because I don't know when I'm going to die. What if I leave past age 80? I can't have that. No, I understand. I understand. And well, you know what I'll do? I'll circle this. And you know something? Based on, uh, it seems that your final expenses aren't going away. This is a permanent problem. I think you made a great decision by looking more into a permanent solution. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through the three final expense programs so we can find out medically-wise which one best fits you. Okay. Now, what I do is I'm used to writing on my lead card. I don't have a lead card, but just make pretend I'm writing on the back of it right now. Um, and I can't, and so I'll even say this, I'll say, I'm sorry, but unfortunately I can't write this part upside down. Is that okay with you? They'll laugh, oh no, that's all right. You kind of want it to be light, and again, it's just more enforcing that I've done this a whole bunch of times. Um, and I know there were some things that I did with whole life that I didn't, I didn't touch upon. Um, again, whatever he said, I never argued with. Uh, 
he even said, oh man, well, Whole Life is going to be the best program. I didn't eat it up and just jump on it. I still asked him just to double check. So of these two programs, which one do you want to look into? Picked Whole Life. You notice I circled it. I didn't just move on. I circled it. There's just a whole bunch of things that we're doing that that hits your uh, your rationale a certain way that we want to make this more and more your decision. Okay? You'll see uh, as we keep going. So now the three programs I'm going to go through with you. The first one I'm going to start with is what's called a, a guaranteed issue program. Does that sound familiar to you? Um... I uh, no, I haven't heard of that. That's fine. Most people haven't heard of it, but they're well aware of maybe one or two companies that do it. Are you familiar with Colonial Pen? You ever see Oh Shred? yeah, I see the commercials. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you notice, he's going through his commercials, and he's like, anyone can get life insurance, no health questions asked, yeah. only at thirty-five cents a unit. Do you know how much a unit is? No. Neither do I. I've been doing this for 13 years, I don't know how much a unit is. The only reason why is because it's based on your age. So this is already for fine print as soon as it starts out. But the guaranteed issue program, oh my God, no health questions. You know, that means I could be on my deathbed. I can call Colonial Pen, $150, $10,000 policy, you got it. They got $150, I pass away. Now the company's out $9,850. But well, you know, they're in this to make money too. So uh, what they do is they assume you're sick. Mm -hmm. Whether you're healthy or sick, they assume you're sick. That's how they don't have to ask health questions. So now to prevent someone like me to be on my deathbed, what they do is they give me a two to three year waiting period. And because they're assuming I'm sick, it makes the premiums 30 to 60% more expensive. Wow. So let's put that down to two to three year waiting period because I want you to have this. And it's... 30 to 60 percent more expensive. Do you have any questions based on this program? Well, uh, 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 where do I fit in? Great question. Um, these are for people who are like terminally ill. So if you're not terminally ill, I'm sure we can find a much better program no, I'm, for you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty healthy, I'll tell you. Great, because, you know, the companies make a lot more money off the healthy than they do the sick, so they're willing to accept you if you'd like it. But uh, what we'll yeah. do is I'll show you the other two programs, and maybe maybe one of those will be and, more and, 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 and it's cheaper than that? Well, it is more cost-effective because you may not have to go through the inflation rates, which will kind of lead into my next program. Are you familiar uh, with a graded benefit program? No. You see how he's asking questions that are, you know, I want to answer it and then get them back into my sales presentation because I don't want to go to my end and then I got to come back to the middle. It's no good. So um, you probably have seen them just like your guaranteed issue program through companies like AARP, Physicians, Mutual of Omaha, companies that will send you stuff through the mail. Uh, are you familiar with any of these companies? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. And because they send you something through the mail, they verify your health, but just a little bit. So instead of the two to three year waiting period, it's a two year waiting period, and then your premiums are inflated 20 to 40%. Notice how he said cheap, I said cost efficient. Notice how I said uh, 30 to 60% uh, more, and then I, I fixed it up when I was talking to him later, and I said, Premiums are inflated. And this is just a proper way of doing things. I figure since I'm on camera, I want you to think I have decent salesmanship. But uh, so we have graded benefit, um, and we have 20 to 40 percent. Now these are for people 20 to 40 percent percent inflated rates and a two-year waiting period. These are people who typically have heart attack, stroke, cancer within the last couple of years. You feel that? Well, you, I, I, I had a heart attack. How long ago? Uh, 10 or 11 years ago. Okay. So what the c companies out there that I work with, they're concerned about things that are not controlled. Not necessarily if you had a health issue, we won't penalize you. My job as an underwriter is to tell the company that this is controlled. So when something's been around for 10 or 11 years, it's safe to say that whatever heart problem you had is controlled. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Okay, great. So you may fit into what our other program is, which is a full benefit program. 
Now, any agent, the fact that I can offer this to you does not make me special as an agent. Any agent with the means to be able to offer this will. Not every agent does, but any agent can. Okay? I'm putting myself down purposely to be humble. I'm being reasonable the whole way through. You'll see as more of the presentation on how ridiculously over-the-top reasonable I'm going to be. And I'm going to pick it back up to turn that into a compliment later on in the presentation, okay? So, so the fact that I can sit down with you and verify your health is the reason why you might be able to get this program. Now, I work with Americans over the age of 50. Things like blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, unfortunately, it's very hard to find an American that doesn't have one of them, let alone all three. So you're not going to be penalized for these, okay? But anything else that becomes a greater health issue, we'll talk about it. We'll see if you can get it. But if you qualify, coverage is day one. And it's fully discounted. Do you have any questions based on the program? Um, not really, no. Okay. Most of the time when I show this, people go, fully discounted? What do you mean by that? That's where you whip out that line that I pretty much did where, you know, there's nothing special about me that, that I can offer this. And we're going to go into what I just said, but just giving you some prepare for it. Nine out of ten people go, fully discounted, what's that? With a huge smile and excitement in their face, okay? Um, so with that being said, of these three programs, this being for terminal illnesses, this being for someone who had a serious health trauma within the past couple of years, and this being relatively good health, which program do you think you qualify? Not which program do you want, which program do you think you qualify yeah, for? Uh, well, I'm in good health, so it would be the third one. Okay. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you three programs based on, on what you wanted, but i got got to let you know something. When I started with New York Life, they were so big on sell the highest premium, sell the highest face amount. It's a win-win-win situation for everyone. You'll win because you'll have them, you'll have plenty of insurance to take care of your family. The company wins because they're going to have tons of premium coming in. And believe it or not, I mean, to be honest, I'm going to win because I have more commission coming. But I was 21 years old. I was just happy to have a job. You know, I listened to whatever my managers told me to do. But what I noticed six, nine months down the road, policy started falling off because... Um, you know, when something happens, the first thing to go are the intangibles. You know, car breaks down, there's a flood, anything. First thing to go are the intangibles. So now, you know, if you had a policy for six to nine months and you let it go, you just wasted your money. And to be really honest with you, the company's going to come after me for commissions. See, the only people that make money are the company. They have enough money. So when you pick a program, I'm going to show you three. The reason why, one is to make sure your family's taken care of. But two, most importantly, is to make sure we pick a program that's affordable for you for the rest of your life. So when I show you the three programs, if you want to pick the highest one, that's fine. But pick something that you know. I know it's great to be excited about taking care of your family, but pick something you know that you're never going to let go, okay? So in this situation, uh, we're showing, you know, he said 10 or 15 would be to cover the mortgage. So in this situation, what I would do is, I would show him 10, which would cover his minimum of what he's looking for. I'll show him 15, cover the maximum. And then I'm going to show 20,000 because he was concerned with inflation. All, all I had to do was ask him about inflation. He was concerned with it. Most people are not going to be concerned with inflation unless you bring it up. I have agents all the time. They go in the houses. They're not bringing it up. It's an extra five or 10,000 they should have in face mount. All you have to do is ask. So how much do you think is good for uh, your final expenses? 10, 15? Is that for today or is that with inflation? Most people will say, well, today I didn't really think about inflation. That'll happen all the time. And that's going to drive your face amount a lot higher than what it would normally be. Okay? So now I'll show them 10, 15, 20, 60, 80, 20. Now of these three programs, which one do you think fits your family's needs and affordability the most? Well, I'd really like to get the 20, but I think it's a little bit too much for me. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew, all right? But I'm comfortable with the 15,000. Okay. So 
Notice when I laid out the three programs, he's a great client. He spoke real fast. Um, there are times where, you, most times, you'll lay out the three programs, they're just going to stare at it. What well, they're thinking. They're thinking, they're trying to think of what am I, what am I going to do next? What am I going to say next? Don't say anything. As soon as you open, and you know, this is common, this is insurance 101. Um, first person who opens their mouth loses uh, just about every time. Uh, as soon as you open your mouth, all of a sudden you're going to find, I need to think about it. Because they were trying to think about it and you went and let them. Uh, so let's say he picks the program. We're not done yet. Most people think in our sales process we're done. Honestly, uh, maybe we're three quarters of the way. So he picked 15,000. Now I got to sit back. I got to take it away from him because this was too easy. So I got to say, uh, Ed, I'm really glad you picked 15 and I circled it. I don't think he's already going to get it. But unfortunately, Ed, uh, I don't even know if you qualify. What do you mean? Well, um, as I said in the full full benefit program, I left out something. When I show the figures, before I do that, I'll do it again for you guys some other time. Um, what I do to pick up the, uh, any agent can do this, I say, well, what makes me special before I get the premiums is that I'm going to pick the program that's going to be the most cost effective for your age and health. I have every single state regulated program, so I'll look through to find the best one for you. So, okay, I'm sorry, I'm back. I just needed to say that. So he's going to say, what do you mean? Well, I'll say, remember when I said full benefit programs, you can only qualify if I verify your health? Yes. Well, now I just have to ask you 13 simple questions. As long as you check no, 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 like you have been when I went through it, uh, hopefully you'll be qualified for the full benefit program. Do you want to see if you qualify? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What you'll find most often is when I say, I don't know if you qualify, and I know we're breaking this up a lot. This has a lot more flow to it, but I just want to go through everything. Um, you'll notice that, um, I want to be able to say this right. If I don't take it away from him, he's not going to appreciate it. You're going to notice that if you do it right, a lot of people say, yeah, I have nothing to hide. Take out your application. One of the most awkward closes for a new agent is getting an application. They look a little something like, uh, well, you sound kind of interested, so I think you want me to take out the application? There's no confidence. There's nothing smooth into it. And what better way to get over an awkward uh, transition instead of me asking to take out the application? I just had him emphatically say, yeah, take out the application. I have nothing to hide. That's great. So now I'm getting into the application. And um, no, no, no to all the health questions. No, 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 no. I get his name, his number, his social security number. Now the important question's coming up. So if you've ever watched, um, who's a dog whisperer? Uh, Caesar, Milan. Caesar Milan, yeah. So uh, if you notice, uh, whenever he's training uh, dogs that are all over the place, he, uh, he works them out so that they're in a calm and submissive phase, I guess they'd be, right? So what I want to do is I want to shock him, release him, shock him, release him, okay? So I got his health, his basic info, and now most important question. And I want, I'm taking a deep breath. He's going to be taking a deep breath with me. What's he going to say? Who would you like to be your beneficiary? And so most people will be relaxed. Oh, my son, my daughter, my nephew, my niece. They're relaxed, Okay. I gotta shock him one more time, okay? So I'll say, I'm glad you feel your niece would be uh, a responsible beneficiary for you. With that being said, I gotta let you know something before we go further. I don't do business like any other agent I've ever met, and probably anyone that you've ever had in your house. Uh, managers uh, don't like it, and agents criticize me for it, but I'm a really empathetic guy. I know when you got that card, in the mail, you were probably expecting something in the mail. And then, you know, you called me in. I appreciate you thinking enough for me to find that it was worth your time sitting with me. But still, you just met me. I'm still kind of a stranger, even though we hit it off. And glad this, uh, I'm glad I was able to help you if you get qualified. But um, I'm in the business of peace of mind. The last thing that's peace of mind is you giving me money 
and now you're staying up all night wondering if you did the right thing. I don't want to do it that way. So that's why when people say, I want to give you money, I don't like taking it. Okay, well, I'd rather. Well, let's see if you get qualified, okay? Then you'll get the policy in two to three weeks. Once you see it's exactly what I say it is, then if you feel comfortable, you can start making premium payments. Does that sound fair? Does that sound fair? Definitely. It does sound fair. You can't argue that. Even if you don't like it, it sounds fair. If you say, how do you like it? That may not be good. What oftentimes you'll have, and if I'm not cutting through my pitch, it's a lot more intense. A lot of times you'll find, you know what, you need to tell those managers that you should be managing them. You need to tell those agents that's how you do business. I have clients fanatically in my face telling me that the way I do it is great, the way they do it is not so much, and what we're talking about is giving me a void check. They're emphatically saying they want to give me a void check, basically. So when it's like that, I'll say, great. And I'm going to say, with that being said, once you see it is exactly the way I say it is, when would you like to start making monthly premiums? Do you like making your payments in the beginning, middle, end of the month? Do you have a preference? Well, I get my Social Security check the third Thursday of each month, so that would, it would be best if it was after that. So the 25th would be really safe? Yeah, I think that's about the latest that comes in. Let's go to the 28th. How's that? 28th is fine. Okay. Absolutely. Now, I can absolutely do it your way. All I have to do is fill out an extra piece of paper. It's not a big deal. All you got to do is get a void check while I fill out a piece of paper, and we'll do it exactly the way you want it. This isn't, uh, so can I get a check? Uh, it's $122 a month. Uh, you know, if you change your mind, you have 30 days. Uh, none of that stuff's happening. And everything that we've done from A to Z has been on his own merit. Everything that we did uh, pretty much is like, um, you ever, like one of those geeky, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons books where you turn page five and there's a dragon. You can choose to turn the page 22 and use your sword. Uh, turn to page 40 and use your shield or you know run like a little wimp and turn to page 8. No matter what, it's going to guide you to the end of the book. No matter what he was going to say, this process was going to guide him to the end. Uh, most agents are out there and they can sell final expense. They can't sell mortgage protection. They can sell mortgage protection. They can't sell final expense. This is something that I can work with either of them. I'm not bashing whole life. I'm not bashing term. I'm letting the client come in Tell me what they need, and I'm providing them information so that they can confidently pick their way through to the end. And then when it comes time for getting an application, they're asking me to take it out. When it comes time to getting a check, they're asking for it. And so in our phone presentation, we want to get them asking us for the appointment. In our sales presentation, we want to get them asking us for the app, asking us for the check. There's no need to close because there's nothing we're closing on here. Adam, there's something I'd like to point out which I think will be very important to everyone, and that is if you didn't uh, interject for everybody's uh, benefit an explanation of what you were doing as you went along, this would have been a very short presentation. Absolutely. How long does it take you to go into the house, get an app, and leave the house? If I'm in a house with just one, uh, it's not two spouses, just one, I will be in and out of just about every single house. Uh, I should be warm up five minutes, presentation 15 to 20, with the telephone interview, I should be out of the house from 35, 37 and a half to 45 minutes every single time, which is why I can book an appointment an hour at a time to make for 15 to 20 minutes of driving, and I'll hit every single appointment on time as long as nothing crazy happens. Now, if there's a spouse, we'll add an extra five or 10 minutes for the telephone interview. Oh, wow, that's great, I'll tell you. Yeah. To, to be in and out that fast, think about how much more money you can make if you're able to book a fuller day because you know that you can be in and out very quick with an app. Well, our sales system it has to be like that because we're doing 25 to 35 appointments a week. You have to be in and out. 
and you have to do it in a way where you button up your sale and we're not cutting our service away from our clients. The service and the presentation we're doing is actually more informative than what most people are doing. Adam, I, I gotta ask you, uh, how can you schedule 25 to 35 appointments in a week? Very simple. At first, where it starts is, you know, uh, the pizza can't run a shop without dough. And we, I can't run my shop without leads, okay? So if I have enough leads, I can set uh, a process where I'm, most people, most insurance agents, there's a lot of flaws. One of the flaws I feel, they're, they always have the mentality, well, if I'm not in front of someone, I'm calling to get in front of somebody. And so now what happens is, is you're on the field, you got two appointments, then you get on the phone for an hour or two, then you get back, you have two more appointments, you create no momentum, you create no good habits, there's very little consistency. When I wake up, Monday, it's phone day. When I wake up Tuesday, it's phone day. When I wake up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it's appointment days. So what I want to do is, every hour, with fresh leads, I'm booking four to six appointments an hour. With older leads, I'm booking one to three appointments an hour. So that's why we have agents who are working five-year-old leads. And, uh, you know, just last week, Brandon, first week on the, on the job, saw almost a $5,000 a week with five-year-old leads. Um, so a lot of times people in the, in the business are complaining, do you have the fresh leads? Do you have the good leads? And, you know, your lead, just as anything else, your resources are only going to be as good as how resourceful you are. Your leads and the time you put into this business are only going to be as good as your process. So um, if you really want to make your time efficient in this business, don't focus on the premium. Focus on your process. If you start doing everything right, then your results are going to be there. I've never met an agent who did all the right things who was just saying, oh, I'm just unlucky. The people who say they're unlucky are the people who want to be unlucky. They're the people that, you know, that want to call, get rejected, so they have a sob story to tell. Um, this is something where if you put everything you have and you got the right attitude and you're coachable, and we, that, these terms are thrown around a lot, but this is something where if you really are coachable, there's no reason an average week is three to $6,000 in premium a week. An average week. Most of my agents... Not 20% of my agents. Most of my agents average six figures in premium. It's not because I just can find all the talented people. We have a system. Whoever comes here and follows it thrives, and whoever does it sometimes succeeds, sometimes doesn't. I can't guarantee after that. Adam, uh, do you have a system for making the appointments with the leads? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the system that you're seeing in the house is a mirrored system on the phone. It's a way to call people. Um, it doesn't matter how old the card is or what lead you're calling. It's a way to engage them, to bring about the need. Oh, gosh. It's a, way to <laughs> it's a way to call them, get the need. And then once you have the need, um, entice them enough where they want information on all of our state regulated programs. There are too many agents. I've had Adam say, hey, Adam, your lead's no good. I say, why not? Well, all these clients have AARP. I keep trying to convince them on the phone I can save them money, but they're not listening. We're not here to make sales on the phone. We're just here to make appointments. And it's not appointments to say one company is bad. It's to go through all of our state regulated programs, again, to be informed and first and foremost. As long as you have that attitude, just like it was in the house, uh, you don't have to sell anymore. So that those guys that I hear all the time, they say, hey, I want to meet your best agent because I want him to know why he's number two. Those guys fizzle out or girls fizzle out. This is not a, a business for closing. And... If you find that you are working really hard, or you're trying, or you're grinding, a lot of this business I see all the time, they say respect the grind, and they talk about how, you know, uh, you know to be an entrepreneur, 
oh, I'm gonna work really hard and I'm not gonna have a lot of friends, but it's alright, it's worth it. These are your processes wrong. This is a way to work hard, make money, have friends, have a good faith, be a good family person. There's ways to do all that and be successful in this business. Anyone who tells you different is just trying to slave drive you. So now what we're trying to do here, 35 hours a week, $250,000 in premium. It's typically what we do when you follow our system. Wow, that's great, Adam. That's awesome. really terrific. Really appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you having very me. Much. Um, now I'm going to assume my old role as a president of uh, Florida Seniors. And it's at this point that I'd like to explain to you that final expense is how you make your entry into the business. It's the meat and potatoes of the business. It actually is the most common sale made in the business. But at Florida Seniors, we have a full menu of products. Anything that a senior would be looking for, we can provide to them, whether it be uh, in the Medicare field where we have all of the Medicare Advantage products and the supplement products or if it's annuities for those people that need income or a better return on their money without risking their capital. We have that too. Or maybe it's dental. Right? Anything that they want we have so that you're able to be the advisor to that senior. All right. Now with that being said, I'd like to introduce our second speaker today, the one and only uh, <laughs> Dave Brecka, who is Mr. Enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, I don't think that there was ever a prospect that he couldn't sell. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, thank you. I'm going to turn the floor over to Dave. Cool. So my name is David Brecka. I've been in the insurance business for about 10 years. Um, I'm actually not going to take up as much time as Adam did. This is going to be a real short thing. I am one of the trainers here uh, that help a lot of the local agents. Uh, I'm just going to briefly get a few of the points I like to go over when training new agents. Uh, number one is that any agent that is here local to the office, I'm more than happy to go into the field with. Um, a lot of agents I talked to in the past who come from different opportunities, they say to me, hey, I felt like I was kind of on my own out there, or hey, they gave me some leads, but you know, when I actually got out in the field, it became really difficult for me. I, I was never taught the right process, so I really like to take the time to kind of get out there and you know, spend time with agents in the field to really give them the support that, that they deserve. Um, I have a few key points, just really just, to, uh, just a brief summary on really what I like to instill into new agents. Uh, number one is a good schedule. Um, Adam said something very similar about having a certain schedule each week that you really follow. We usually do Mondays, Tuesdays, and have our appointments lined up at the end of the week. Um, that that's leads into really one of the first things that we do a little bit differently. Number one, I always want to make sure that the agent is treating their time as their most valuable asset, rather than the leads. And a lot of people want to say, hey, I want the leads, I want the leads. They really kind of make sure that they're really putting themselves in a situation where the leads become their most valuable asset. That's not really how you want to look at this business. We do not have a lead problem. Uh, a lot of my agents have a time problem, which is a better problem to have, uh, where they have so many appointments or they have people who want to reschedule with them, but they have to move them into the next week because they physically can't put any more appointments into their current week. So that's, that's one of the big things. Uh, secondly is you really don't have to be a magical salesperson. You don't really have to have the gift of the gab. A lot of our most successful agents are people who uh, don't come from a sales background. I, I personally you know, have several engineering degrees and I, I never really thought myself to be a natural born salesman. Uh, but the system we have is, is really good for people who are coachable and have a good work ethic. So you really don't have to be uh, a certain type of person to really be successful at this. Anybody could actually do it. Um, the, the last thing I usually like to go over is, besides coachability, is just having a strong work ethic is super, super critical. Um, I find that when people, maybe sometimes if they have a really successful week, they want to put their feet up the next week or they want to go and take that vacation or whatever. Um, I find having a strong work, work ethic is going to carry you significantly farther than any natural sales ability could. 
Uh, we also do offer conference calls for agents, for agents who can't make it to the office on a weekly basis. We have several conference calls each week where we take the time to actually talk about your week. Uh, any any uh, things we need to improve on, if we need to role play our phone script, if we need to role play our, our presentation. And we really need to put yourself in a situation to kind of hone your skills. We offer several different conference calls every single week uh, to help you with that. Um, and that's really it. I mean, as long as you come in with a good attitude and you're open-minded, really anybody can, can be successful in this business. I myself am a former, I was ranked 12th nationally with some of my carriers here in, the, in North America. Uh, I've usually used to making several trips every year. I've been to Europe, I went to Vancouver last year. Um, I'm used to making several trips each year and you know I have the production to really prove it. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Ed here. And uh, my, again, my name is David Breck and I look forward to working with you guys. There you go, Mr. Ed. Thanks, Dave. All right, so before we conclude, I'd just like to say one final thing. One of the great things about Florida Seniors is that you have the opportunity to choose how you would like to conduct your career. Do you want to conduct it as a broker, detached from the agency? That's one way. Right? Another way is as a housed agent, a career agent where we provide unlimited free leads to you and you're able to take advantage of our beautiful agency where you get uh, a free office, you get uh, a cutting edge telephone system, internet, uh, all of the office uh, uh, support that you'll need and it's all f at no cost to you. So we are going to pick up a large amount of what would normally be your expense, right? Because we really support our agents. And being in a house situation, it's a daily learning experience. Whether there's formal training or not, you learn from your fellow agents, you hear what somebody else says, you get advice from more senior people. These are all great benefits to you. Or you may be... Uh, an advanced agent that would choose to be a career agent but work from their home. That opportunity is available to you too. So we're very flexible. We feel that we offer uh, the best setting based on what your needs are. So we invite you to come by, speak with us, attend one of our seminars uh, where we will uh, go into great depth about the opportunity, come over and meet the people uh, that work here at Florida Seniors. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending today and I want to thank those of you that will be viewing this video sometime in the future.